my niece Carol Ann, uh, my, my brother married a little girl from New York and they had a, uh, a daughter who was a teenager when they discovered that the mother, uh, Ann, was losing her sight. She had diabetes very bad. And um, Ann asked my, my niece, her daughter, to call me and come to the house and lay hands on her. She had uh, bleeding retina. They were going to do uh, surgery on both eyes. And Carol Ann drove her to Barnes Hospital that day for the surgery. And when she came out of the doctor's office, she was laughing because no surgery was needed. There were no blood in the eyes at all. And she kept her sight for 25 years after that, before till she died. And they're all, they all talk about that every day. They live out here in St. Peter's. And another case, <coughs> the, the um, choir director and piano player at the Leonard Baptist Church, husband was a mailman. And he had been in the service and he had developed a lung condition and he had a hole in his lung the size of a dime. And he had to do dialysis uh, ever so often and they said he'd never be able to work again. And he was quite a young man. So of course being from our church, uh, Henrietta asked me if I would go see him at the Veterans Hospital and have prayer for him. And I went, and we had prayer, and I didn't hear any more from either one for several months. And there, there was a, a luncheon of some kind going on at one of the churches in St. Louis, and I had been invited to come. So while I was standing in the in the uh, room where the food was being served, I heard someone behind me running running through the church, making a terrible commotion, and it was this mailman. <laughs> he had been healed of that condition and back to work for two or th two or three months, and was so happy he ran around the church with me carrying me on his shoulders and yelling and carrying on so, so People get their blessings and, and they, I wonder if they even thank God for them. But uh, that was another story. There are so many since, uh, since, you know, I'm not a young woman anymore. I've lived half my life doing this and they're hard to remember some of these cases. But the man who, who uh, was going to lose his leg had an aunt named Mary Flowers and my mother had met her at the post office one Christmas working and she had a growth on her neck that was very unsightly the size of a pencil and about an inch long and she had to wear a scarf around her neck when she went to church or wanted to hide this growth so she called me one day and told me the doctors wanted to cut it off and she said, asked me what I thought. And I said, well, Mary, I said, you believe in prayer? Now I'm going to tell you that that will fall off on your pillow one night. And that's what happened. And she kept it in a jar until she died. It was gray, a terrible, nasty-looking thing. And uh, James saw healings like that throughout the family. They had children, you know, and they that were healed through prayer. 